Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today, I probably look a little bit funny, and that is because we are using our special DNA cam that is equipped with optical filters that will allow you at home to visualize the fragments of fluorescently labeled DNA that we're going to be working with. Today, I will show you how to cut bands of DNA out of an agarose gel for purposes of purification. Okay, so let's get started. I've got everything I need right here. So I'm wearing my, my gloves, my nitrile gloves. I've got my, <clears throat> uh, my agarose gel here. I've got 1.5 mil Eppendorf tubes to collect the band of the gel that I cut out. I have my disposable scalpels that I'm going to be using to perform the actual cutting. Uh, and I've got ethanol and Kim wipes to clean up after I'm done. Here is the gel that we're going to be working with today. I will cut the bands from this gel and we'll go through the protocol two times. Uh, first in the natural light uh, so that you can see uh, the manipulations uh, and then second using the fluorescent light so that you can hopefully see the DNA that we're actually cutting. So here is our basic strategy for cutting a band out of an agarose gel. First, I want to identify the lane of the gel uh, where I expect to find my band. Okay. Then I will cut very precisely on one side of the gel and separate away the unwanted fragment. Then I will do the same thing on the other side of my band until I have left only the lane of the gel that contains my DNA fragment. Uh, by the way, in a lot of labs, they don't like you to cut directly on uh, the gel box imager, uh, and that's because you can scratch the surface, which over time will make it uh, uh, ugly and less functional. But Today, my lab manager is not looking, so I am just going to go ahead and do it. Once you've isolated <clears throat> the band, or the lane rather, that contains your gel, we'll make one more cut just above our band in the gel. Uh, here, the key is going to be to come down directly vertically with the scalpel uh, and not, in an, not at an angle. Uh, in order to make a nice straight cut in our, uh, in our gel. And then, one more time, just below the DNA band that we're trying to isolate. So we're looking for the thinnest possible slice of gel that still contains our DNA fragment, something about the width of a coin, right? And not, uh, not like a quarter, not like an American coin, something a little thicker than that, like a, like a European coin, like a serious, like a real, a real coin. Okay. And then, when we're done, we'll take a 1.5 mil tube, scoop up the band, and take it away. Okay. It's just that simple. Now, I will clean up this gel for the next person. And for the second time through the procedure, we will enter fluorescence mode. So, overhead lights off. Illumination tool on, and there we have it. So I can see, uh, because I'm wearing these, these orange glasses that filter out all of the blue light that's produced by this uh, illumination table, but not the green light that's produced by the fluorescently labeled DNA, uh, I can see these bands perfectly, as I hope you can too at home. So we've got uh, over here the DNA ladder. So this is a series of uh, DNA fragments of known sizes that we can compare to our fragment uh, in order to uh, uh, determine the size of our DNA fragment. And over here I see two uh, brightly lit, well-defined fragments of DNA. So the, the, the larger one is, is here, uh, closer to me on this gel, 
uh, and the, the smaller one is below, further away from me. So, first cut, just to one side of the band that I'm trying to isolate, and then we remove the unwanted piece of the gel. So now that I've separated the gel, it's very important that I remember which of the two bands that I want. Because without the ladder there for association, I won't be able to tell uh, anymore which band is larger and which band is smaller. Second cut just to the right. Third cut just above the DNA fragment that I'm isolating. And fourth cut just below the fragment that I'm isolating. And there you have it. So this should be, this is about a 100 milligram slice of gel, thick enough to contain all of the DNA in our band, but not too thick, which means it will be easy for us uh, to purify this agarose, to remove it and separate it from our DNA uh, later on in the protocol. Now I take a 1.5 mil Eppendorf tube, very carefully scoop up my, oops, scoop up my band of DNA with the scalpel, very carefully since it's so sharp. Ah! Drop it into the tube. And there you go. A perfectly isolated band of DNA cut from an agarose gel and ready for downstream purification and use in uh, the application of your choice. That's all for today. Until next time, stay bright.